the only thing that limits the power of our government is the limit of our obedience. In fact, the limit of the people's obedience is the only power that has ever kept a government in check. Ever. And today, as governments increase their size and power to levels never seen before in history, we, the people, must once again find that limit. The limit of our obedience. The point where we say, no, I'm not going to do that. Mahatma Gandhi called it non-violent non-compliance. Aristotle said, it's not always the same thing to be a good man and a good citizen. Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, if a regime is immoral, its subjects are free from all obligations to it. Martin Luther King Jr. said, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. I agree with them all. And to state the same idea in a more modern way, I say, good people break bad laws. More evil has been done in history by people who were obeying than by people who were disobeying. The worst atrocities in history were not carried out by tyrants, but by those who obeyed the tyrants. And today, would-be tyrants, people like the UN, like World Economic Forum alumni, Wealthy business people, you know the types, all the high and mighty ones, the rich and powerful who meet in Davos and elsewhere. They depend on the obedience of the people, and especially the obedience of the enforcers, in order to implement their dangerous and frankly deadly agenda. Some people object. It's different now. You can't compare history with today. Or they say, they're not evil. Those people are trying to help us. <laughs> well, if history tells us anything, it's that evil people always believe that they're the ones who are good. The urge to save humanity is almost always a false face for the urge to rule it. So observed H.L. Mencken. And he's right. These would-be tyrants are absolutely certain that they are good and right and righteous. And that's what makes them so dangerous. Of all tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims might be the most oppressive. Those who torment us for our own good will torment us without end, for they do so with the approval of their own conscience. It's their belief in their own morality that, in their mind, justifies their lust for power. Notice how their solutions always involve giving them more money, more power. And notice how our own politicians so often play along. They're tempted by the allure of playing God with people's lives. So they willingly join the club. The club of petty tyrants. And they bring all the bad ideas home from Davos to Parliament and push through the will of these would-be tyrants for our own good, of course. The Great Reset will prove to be as deadly as the Great Leap Forward was for China. Only more so, because the Great Reset will apply right across the globe. More than 30 million people died in Mao's Great Leap Forward, mostly from starvation, but also from labour camps and executions. Many more will die from the Great Reset, mostly from energy poverty and the man-made famine that will follow. Perhaps that sounds crazy to you. Perhaps you do not see the connection between the centrally controlled command economies of the past, of the USSR under Stalin, of China under Mao, of North Korea under the Kim Dynasty. Perhaps you don't yet see the connection between those and the centrally controlled command economy of Klaus Schwab's Great Reset. But you will. Give it a few more years and you won't be able to miss the connection. It's no coincidence that our energy grid being fixed by these elites has made power unaffordable for millions. It's no coincidence that they are simultaneously promoting ideas like 15-minute cities, where they monitor and control your life with cameras and geofencing to make sure that you're being good, however they define that word, and at the same time pushing ideas like central bank digital currencies, where they can monitor and control your spending with smart currencies that can only be spent on approved purchases. 
And of course, that's happening at the same time as they're pushing for international vaccine passports, where they monitor and control your health and vaccination status so that they can exercise total control over your body. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is what they're talking about in public. They've written books about it. Can you imagine the things they discuss behind closed doors? If they get what they're pushing for publicly, they will control where you work, live, socialize, and shop. What you buy, how much of it you buy, whether you're allowed to travel, and all the while, they'll be requiring you to stay up to date with a never-ending supply of new concoctions to be injected into your bloodstream. Spend some time reading the Sustainable Development Goals and realize that they're not about sustainability or development. They're about power and control. Their every solution involves more money, more power, more control for them. And most of our politicians are on board. Thankfully, not all. There are a few good ones, but they are few and far between, and there's not enough of them yet to stop this agenda from being rammed through in the coming years. There's only one thing that can stop that from happening, and that is the limit of our obedience. And if there's no limit to your obedience, (laughs) then there's no limit to their power. I reached the limit of my obedience in March 2020 when I refused to go along with the lockdowns. What followed in my home city of Melbourne, Australia, was two years of madness, which I've documented in the award-winning film Battleground Melbourne. You can watch that for free at battlegroundmelbourne.com. So I know that my obedience has a limit. There is a point where I say no and begin non-violent, non-compliance. Do you know where your limit is? Are you sure that you even have one? Perhaps you think it's better to just obey, to do the right thing. The obedient always think of themselves as virtuous rather than cowardly. That's attributed to George Carlin, but whatever the real origin, it's true. It's not the tyrants that commit atrocities. It's the obedient who follow the bad laws that the tyrants write. The limit of your government's power is the limit of the people's obedience. And that means that we need each other. We need each other to reach the limits of our obedience and start to say no, in numbers large enough to truly make a difference. The next few years will be a test for us all. And I'm counting on you just like you're counting on me. I'm counting on you to find the limit of your obedience. Good people break bad laws. They're words to live by.